Let's now switch over and talk about the, some of the new RSV vaccines. Um, you know, the American Lung Association, as part of our mission to promote lung health and prevent lung disease, knows that knowledge and awareness is very empowering for patients. Uh, RSV infection in adults may be a new concern for some older adults, especially those with chronic conditions such as asthma and COPD. And we are using our multiple channels to get the information out about the RSV vaccine. Currently, with multiple vaccines, updated COVID shots, yearly influenza, not to mention updating of pneumococcal and diphtheria and tetanus vaccines, one of our concerns is the development of vaccine fatigue, coupled with, as you know, the underlying mistrust in science that's evolved over the last uh, year or two in certain segments of the population. We are concerned that vaccine uptake, especially of this new RSV vaccine, will be less than optimal from a public health standpoint. But all that aside now, Let's talk about what we do have in the way of RSV vaccines. And I want to start out talking about the one recommended for older adults with certain comorbidities. Can you tell us how you and your group are going to be handling this vaccine and recommending it? Yeah. So this is uh, really exciting to have an option for older adults. This is a relatively new recommendation that came down over the summer. The FDA approved two in May and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's Advisory Council Committee on Immunization Praxis, or ACIP, uh, released guidance on June 21st. And the current recommendation is recommending shared decision-making. So what you were talking about, Dr. Rizzo, with the need to have conversations and combat misinformation is really at the forefront of the ACIP's recommendations for this. So they recommend shared decision-making for adults aged 60 or older and vaccination before or at the onset of the RSV season. So they really want you to have a conversation with patients or for if you're in the community to have a conversation with your medical provider about the risk and benefits of these new vaccines. This is both because the vaccines are incredibly effective at preventing cases of RSV, particularly the lower respiratory tract infection that we worry so much about in older people, but there were some instances of immune sort of activation in these trials that they want people to know about and make an informed decision about before they get vaccinated. So there are two vaccines. Uh, one is called RxV. It's made by GlaxoSmithKline and Sanofi. And one is, by, is called Abrisvo, and that's made by Pfizer. Both of them are protein vaccines that target the prefusion F protein that we've been talking about so much. Both of them, so the Arexia vaccine was uh, tested in over 24,000 people across 17 countries. It was effective against both RSV A and B and had out, really outstanding efficacy of almost 83% against RSV associated uh, lower respiratory tract disease. It also was effective, very effective against severe respiratory tract disease in the 90, 94% and against overall any acute respiratory tract infection. There was in this trial one case of Guillain Barre syndrome, one death due to acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, which may or may have not been related to the vaccine, but was occurred in someone who got an RSV vaccine and the flu vaccine simultaneously. And there were some interesting, there were, it was not statistical, but there was a numerical predisposition for atrial fibrillation in the vaccine arm. So the FDA has said that there will be post-marketing surveillance for all three of those things in the rollout of this vaccine. The Abrisvo, the Pfizer vaccine, is also prefusion uh, F protein vaccine. It doesn't have an adjuvant. Uh, that was trialed in over 34,000 adults across seven countries. I think the efficacy is very similar. Overall efficacy against uh, lower, uh, lower respiratory tract infection was 86%. Overall infection, more protective against severe infections. And similarly, they also saw one incident of Guillain-Barre syndrome. They saw an incident of Miller-Fisher and a hypersensitivity reaction. The good news is, so high efficacy, overall, the side effects on both, for both of those vaccines were very mild. People had, 15% of people had fatigue. There was 11% had pain at the injection site, some headaches, some muscle pain. Fever was very rare, which is incredibly helpful in a vaccine. As, as an infectious disease doctor, there's always the, does my patient have 
right. a new illness or do they just have a vaccine reaction? So I think the caveats are that we have these two new vaccines, which are highly effective. Neither of these studies that I just mentioned had many participants who were 80 and above, and they also didn't have many participants who were frail or in long-term care facilities. And so I think it's important for us to pay attention to the post-marketing pharmacovigilance to see what happens with those populations. The other caveat, as you noticed in the recommendation from ACIP, the timing of vaccination is supposed to be before the start of the RSV season, and our RSV season has already started. Right. So they are basically saying, offer them as soon as they become available, because I think we're going to need them this fall. Right. Very good. Um, like the COVID and flu, we've been given direction that they can be given at the same time. What's the feeling about the RSV vaccine and spacing between other vaccines? So this is really interesting, and it gets a little bit more complicated, and this gets to some some expert recommendation rather than evidence. So the ACIP listed co-administration of new RSV vaccines with other vaccines as acceptable, as long as they are separated on your arm by an inch or given in the, given in the opposite arm. However, the only trials to date are really with co-administration with the influenza vaccines. And because of the immunologic safety signal I mentioned, that's one of the reasons that there's all this emphasis on shared decision making when you're delivering the vaccine. The other thing that happened in some of the co-administration trials was that the antibody titers for both RSV and influenza were a little bit lower in the people who got mm. the vaccines co-administered. So I know some providers who are hesitant to advise RSV co-administration until we have more data. And we don't currently have any data on RSV vaccines being given with any of the other vaccines that we might give for this population, like COVID or shingles or pneumo you know, right. pneumonia vaccines. So we do have a lot of data that you can give COVID and flu vaccines at the same time very safely. So in my own practice, I'm recommending all of these vaccines. Um, I'm going to recommend people, I am now recommending people get flu and COVID shots as soon as possible mm -hmm. and also get RSV vaccination and having that conversation with my patients. Some of them might have a really hard time coming back in for a second shot or a third shot. And in that case, you know, they live a long way from right. the clinic right. or they have a complicated job. And so I think under those circumstances, I would tell people to go ahead and get them and get them all at once. But shared decision-making is going to be really important right. as we'll be paying attention to those immune signals in the post-marketing data. 